And she said, if we don't have music, then we're nothing but animals. <laughs> to today's vlog. Today's vlog is very very different. A few weeks ago I reached out to everyone who has done a coffee with Dan with me over the last few years and asked them to contribute something uh, about how their experience of 2020 has been as a professional musician. Now not everyone was able to take part, some people didn't want to appear on camera but have passed their thoughts on to me. Uh, but these four guys who I've got involved are a good cross section of people. You've got Rob Burton who got to the final of the Young Musician of the Year a number of years ago. He's a classical saxophone player. He is in his fourth year at the Royal Academy of Music in London. You've got Rob Hughes who is a working professional musician or was up until uh, lockdown started in March he came up with a very interesting way that he had to go out and earn a living very very different career move than uh, the music. Then you've got Mikko Hilden who is in Sweden. Sweden's been held up as this beacon of how it should be done but it's actually interesting to hear Mikko's take on the fact that most of the large venues have been shut since March. It's only been venues that hold 50 people. It's not quite as relaxed and uh, free as maybe everyone seems to be spinning and thinking about in the UK. And finally, Nick, who hosts the 10 Minute Jazz podcast, who, like myself, has found other areas of work have taken off during lockdown, particularly teaching and, um, you know, that kind of aspect of it. But, you know, understanding how life has changed and also on a positive spin, what we're looking forward to. Anyway, it's quite a long one, so grab a good coffee and uh, settle down for this very special Coffee with Dan. Rob, how you doing? How has your 2020 been for you? We won't call it lockdown. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Due to go out to Asia uh, on tour with a band called Swing Out Sister, um, which had sort of um, various hits throughout the 90s and stuff like that. And so we were rehearsing um, the week before lockdown. And obviously, as the week progressed, it started to show more and more. And it probably sounds naive to even to be rehearsing, but we were due to fly out and be out there for about three and a half weeks, the Asian tour that's gone. But it was all into the summer. And the problem with my summers are I'm, I play um, uh, it's kind of that retro scene, the 80s scene at the minute with various bands. But I'm in a house band and there are all these festivals that go on. So it's weeks of rehearsal, which is handy you know, paid work and then festivals at the weekend. And I realised that it's all gone. And I have to admit, I took the boys to school and I came back to this where I'm sat now and I just cried. I sat down and I cried. Um, and it's emotional to even say it right now. Because you have to remember, or people listening have to remember at this point, there was no talk of furlough or anything else like that. So I got online on the Friday and I saw a job uh, for, as a refuse loader. Now, a, a refuse loader, twice where being called a bin man. And uh, I went to, to a, a recruitment agency, got on my bicycle and signed up and uh, had my first day on the Monday, the first day of lockdown. So I became a bin man. Probably seems like an extreme thing to do, but just taking it back to that period, um, there was no talk of furlough and I, you know, I've got two children and bills to pay. Psychologically, it helped me because I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty unhappy about being locked up. So I was out on the street and I was seeing what was going on. And in all honesty, I saw nothing, absolutely nothing. Not, not ambulances rushing backwards and forwards or anything like that. Um, so I don't want to be too controversial, but I would say that we all need to, from someone that wasn't locked down and my only access to news was a screen, yeah. understand that I think we can all live our lives and not live them too much in fear. We need to all be careful and everything else. But I, I think for someone that wasn't locked down, the media need to be a little bit more responsible in their reporting. What did it do? It actually gave me a breather from the routine of trying to stay on top of my instrument, which sounds ridiculous. And right now, here we are in October, um, 
right now in October, I'm trying to get back. Now, it hurts when I go online and see these amazing players do all these amazing transcriptions or solos or records that they all did during lockdown. It only hurts because I'm jealous. I want to, I want to get back to where I was. So that's where I'm trying to get back to. Um, but uh, no, musically, I remove myself. And I'll be honest with you as well. I am giving myself until Christmas now. And all I'm doing is teaching. I have no gigs yeah. to review. I don't know whether I want to be doing this for the rest of my life or maybe I want to try and do something else. You know, I do see these things a little bit sometimes as a, a wake up call. I don't know. I, I don't see myself getting back to gigging on the on the larger audience level, perhaps at all for a very long time so I, mm. in a way this could be a good thing uh just putting on smaller gigs and trying things like that could be interesting so yeah I give up don't want to give up but i am nearer stopping being a musician than i've ever been which scares yeah. the life out of me the best phrase i've heard is from a doctor whose children i teach and i was having a good old moan about all this and she said if we don't have music then we're nothing but animals and i think meant right. that <laughs> hey, that's spot on spot on well rob thank you so much for your time no worries right, i must let you get back you're the best dressed bin man i've ever seen <laughs> thank you very much can i be a hustly, hustly oh yes don't forget yes I've rob's books been, i'll link to them yeah. below thank you that's the beginner book it's yeah. got a play along and that's more about grade yeah. five grade and then, uh, do you have a website or the amazon yeah it's robhughesmusic.com i'll link to you um, and please buy them from rob not from yeah, amazon I, this is also available to purchase if you want can you it sign from- it not been washed. <laughs> I'm speaking to you from London. Right. And you, you're still at the Royal Academy, aren't you? You're yes. Yeah, I'm in my here now. And how, how was the end of last year in terms of obviously lockdown and everything else like that? How, how did your third year end? Well, I mean, it. I don't know. It kind of felt as though third year didn't really end or it didn't really happen. Um, we did kind of continue doing some of our studies um, throughout lockdown, just like via Zoom. I was still having saxophone lessons. I had to send in all of my essays, et cetera. Um, but I mean, it's not as good as kind of being in the building and, and doing the real things and the real performance. Well, I, I really struggled with it kind of as a musician and personally, I think, um, because I, but it made me realise how kind of driven I am by performances and by kind of competitions and exams and all of those things. And I realised that's one of kind of my biggest drives to to kind of practising, I suppose. So once that was all stripped away and I had nothing to prepare for, um, I had to kind of really self motivate myself to practise, which was hard to start off with but then i guess i kind of found out more about kind of my musical personality have you explored any new repertoire or any new styles sort of during lockdown has that given you an opportunity to do that um well so over the past few years i've been doing kind of mainly just classical stuff but i was actually doing quite a few jazz transcriptions over lockdown um yeah so which which was nice to kind of come back to because i've not done any in in a bit too long um so it was nice to do that and i was also exploring repertoire that i wouldn't usually have time to explore kind of during term time at at the royal academy so it was nice to be able to do that any kind of uh new artists that you found possibly during lockdown that you've been listening to or uh, have you explored other areas because i know you're quite a keen painter as well yeah well i mean i've been kind of exploring doing kind of art a lot more um and kind of getting into that and discovering lots of artists and kind of learning more about art history but in terms of musicians i've i've actually been listening to a lot of baroque music which is something that i haven't kind of listened to much before and kind of exploring that route and listening to lots of string players which i've found useful and kind of interpreting my own music brilliant and how, how do you feel about next year and, and the next four or five years i mean has it altered how you're thinking about your career or do you feel that things will come back um, well, I, I don't really know what to expect, but I think that how I'm kind of like approaching music now compared to how I was approaching it six months ago is kind of completely different. And I kind of have a different, I don't know, mindset with playing and performing. And and I think that will probably lead me down a different route to how I would have done without lockdown happening. Um, so I'm interested to see kind of where 
where everything will take me but obviously I'm not I was sure. going to say as, as a classical saxophone player you're quite a niche group anyway so obviously it's it's it, it's a you've chosen a tough path anyway so we we have a lot of respect for you on this channel for the path you're pursuing bigger venues and theaters and stuff like that uh, so they're closed so for me it hasn't uh, changed much in my life because I teach mostly and if I do gigs, I do occasional gigs. It's usually smaller venues. <laughs> I'm a jazz player, right? So, so uh, I've been lucky, very lucky that way. I've been able to because we didn't close schools, so I've been able to teach still, even though some cities have closed them, but not for me. And uh, but I, having said that, I have friends who are musicians who play, make a living playing gigs, and they've been hurt, like they've been out of work for five months or more or was it now six months or something so i've been very lucky and uh again it's because i teach that's how i make a living right yeah and that's so, what you were doing before this, yeah. this happened as well yeah yes well I, in the past i used to play more gigs but the last couple of years or whatever i've been a yeah. teacher. so uh I actually, I actually got a new job too. So I, I moved across. I used last time we talked. I lived in Stockholm. Now I live south of Gothenburg, which is on the complete opposite side of Sweden. So right. Uh, have you, have you found your practice? Have you, have you managed to keep yourself going or? Oh, for sure. I mean, I've been practicing a lot, and I didn't last couple of years. Uh, prior to this, I didn't practice that much. I'm, I'm one of those players who always practiced in my entire life, basically. But these last couple of years and months, I've been practicing a lot, both because of the pandemic, but also because I got a new job where I work less. So I'm not a full-time teacher anymore, and which and I don't have to travel as much for work. So, but uh, yeah, I've been focusing on my YouTube channel and practicing and buying books, and I bought a new guitar, which That's is nice. inspiring to practice and. Yeah, I've been practicing a lot lately. Yeah. First of all, I think a lot of people learn how to use uh, Zoom and uh, how to use the technology. Like my previous workplace, they had all this technology, right? Like Zoom and whatever, uh, something called uh, Microsoft Teams, but nobody knew how to use it. And this forced everybody to learn how to actually, because we had to use it for teaching. All, some of the students couldn't come in, right? For if they have a weak immune system or whatever. Uh, but then hopefully it is has taught us to be less prestigious about being a musician, right? Like it's okay to do something else. Mm. There's a lot of prestige from, especially among the people I used to hang out with that like you're supposed to be able to support yourself as a musician or you're kind of a loser, mm. but we shouldn't uh, think like that. It's, it's okay. even some of the greatest musicians like Dizzy Gillespie, he had support to support himself as a janitor or something at some point, which is obviously sad at one level, but I think it's okay. It's okay to do something else for a while to normal. Yeah. Hopefully there will be a kind of a reaction to this where people are starving for music. I went to a jam session the other day. There was less than 50 people there, so we were allowed, right, to have this jam session. It was a jazz jam session, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> no, because there was less than 50 people. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and you could tell like f how people were starved for live music, myself included. I it felt really good to hear. It didn't have to be like Shikori or anything like that. It was just local band, what right? But so yeah, hopefully that will happen. That people will discover live music again. That that's what my hope is, and I, I think you know we have to look back to the last time there was a pandemic. Um, you know, globally was it was the 18 to 20, 1918, 1920 pandemic. It came after the dreadful events of the First World War, but we had the decade after that known as the Roaring Twenties, where you know mm -hmm. there was so much the Jazz Age as was known. I mean, we, we won't we'll talk less about the 1930s. Obviously, we hope that that, that yeah. doesn't mean it's no. But I mean, when people say like 2020 is the worst year ever. It's like, well, that's not true. Like, look yeah. at yeah, last pandemic during the First World War was yeah. obviously a lot worse. Yeah, yeah. Mikko, thank you so much for your time. We're going to do a collab as well after this to share with people so uh, people can keep, keep their eyes peeled. But thank you for being part of this very special collaborative Coffee with Dan. My pleasure. Brilliant. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, no. And that hopefully it will... Um... 
I'm definitely encouraged by how many people still value music and, and learning music and being an online entrepreneur slash musician. Uh, my business hasn't taken as much of a hit as a lot of people I know, but it's also been kind of a bummer in the way that we just don't get to share music live with as many people as we used to. So I'm halfway encouraged and uh, halfway just kind of bummed out that that we don't get to do the thing that we love, which is, you know, being in a room with people and sharing our music with I've them. I've been pretty lucky. So the states are very, very small in the Northeast. Um, so being an hour north of Boston, I'm actually in the state of New Hampshire. And it's actually kind of funny the way that it's worked. Like Massachusetts was a major um, hot zone when this all started. But where I live, which is a little bit more rural and spread out, uh, even though we're right on the border of Massachusetts, the cases, case numbers have been low and the restrictions weren't as crazy as they were in Massachusetts. Um, have you studied anything new? Have you worked on any new um, concepts or, you know, in terms of playing or in terms of teaching? Has it inspired you to do anything? You know, how have you, how have you spent the time now that this whole chunk of what you've done normally in terms of going out and playing gigs has, has stopped you know what, what have you done have you done something different from music for a while anything that sort of changed for yeah you? i mean i have been um just recently actually i've been you know the first couple of months of this whole lockdown process i was just very inspired to come up with new educational products what i started to realize was how important um online delivery of mm. some kind of product that a musician can use would be uh, during this lockdown because obviously you can't go to your local music school or in some cases even work with your local music teacher. Um, so I wanted to try to keep the, the students of my podcast and my personal students just engaged and make sure that you know they weren't putting the instrument down until something changes because who knows when this is all going to be uh, over. So that was, you know, the first part of it. And then lately I have been investigating some other skills. Like if I want to deliver products online, I should probably get better at the actual architecture end of things. So believe it or not, I'm actually starting to study a little bit of coding and, you know, starting to figure out how I could build my own products from scratch instead of um, using only the tools that are out there. Yeah, I think, like you said, so much of my career is based off of teaching that I definitely, you know, I feel so much for the people whose income 100% relies on touring. And I've got a lot of friends in New York and Los Angeles that, I mean, they the rug was just completely swept out from under them. So I definitely see myself staying in music. Honestly, I don't think I could do anything else. Um, but I think I'm starting to think about different avenues into the music industry, I guess. I noticed a, a bit of a climb. And I think that my podcast is a little bit different from others where it's short and it's very much to the point. So I think a lot of my listeners, instead of listening to it on a commute or something like that, they actually sit down and they treat it like they're in a lesson. You know, so they'll sit down in front of their computers in their practice space and they'll actually with their horn try to follow along and do the things I'm saying. So my podcast is a bit unique where it's not like an interview style or anything like that, where you're right. I used to listen to probably a dozen podcasts a week on my commute, and that has definitely dipped as I've been in the car less. But um my podcast has actually picked up a little bit and I've been really encouraged to see just people from all over the world that are looking for different ways to get that information that they want to get to stay inspired and, and keep developing their skills. So there you go, some perspectives from different musicians at different stages. One thing I have said to the likes of Rob, the younger people, is they are the people who are going to be innovating. They're the people who don't need to worry necessarily about choosing music as a career because they've got time for their things, things to recover and they're going to be able to see if they're creative enough how to make this work during the 21st century. I do want to draw attention to a few things though. There was this campaign run by the UK government basically saying if you're working in the arts maybe you need to retrain. Well no, maybe if you're working in other subjects you need to retrain as well because the arts offer so much more. There's also a comment on here from one of you guys saying, you know, well, the music won't die. Um, you know, there'll still be people making music. Yes, but if you were not having people making music at such a high level that they have trained to do, 
the music will suffer, the quality won't be there. If you haven't got people who have dedicated their lives to taking this art form forward, it will suffer. You will suffer. You will. We will all be the poorer because we don't have people working in the creative arts and it's, it's a massive industry as well as we've said before. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this. Please do hit a like and subscribe. Check out my last vlog here. This is what I was up to. Gosh, this time last year when things seemed tough then for me personally, but in the world seemed very, very different. Please uh, check that out. I'll be back with you with a new vlog next week. Thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.